family and welcome to today's mindset monday thank you so much for coming and sharing some time with me we are wrapping up our stay here in myrtle beach and it was absolutely amazing um the only way i could get lighting so you all could see my face is if i stood up and held the camera this way but there's no view this way and look look how gorgeous it is out there so I'm going to take the camera off my face and talk to you all and let you all see the beautiful water. It's so serene and peaceful. It's a little chilly here too. <laughs> I'm about to go change my clothes. It was a scorcher when we got here, but um, I stepped out this morning and I was like, snap, it's cold. <laughs> all right, so let me turn the angle around and jump into the topic. Okay, family, so today we are going to talk about how to remember who you are so you can fulfill your purpose, okay? Now, we've touched on this before, but I wanted to go in a little deeper, right? Because the, the way how you remember things is by having it repeated to you over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? So... The first step on how to remember who you are so you can fulfill your purpose is not thinking you're a human being. You have to remember that you're a spiritual being having a human experience. You are a spiritual being who chose. You chose. You decided. Okay? You made a commitment to become a human so you can experience Earth. So you can learn and evolve you have to remember that okay we are not these human mundane 3d one-dimensional linear beings that is not who we are all right so when you take that in digest it and accept it okay when you begin to do that then you can move on to step two step two is being comfortable with yourself okay not with your human avatar but with yourself your true inner self how do you get comfortable okay there's a lot of people that can't quite uh, sit still with themselves right they don't like the thoughts that run through their head they don't like what they see when they stare deep into the mirror right when they stare deep at themselves for a minute looking into their own eyes they don't like it all right so you have to start to get comfortable with being by yourself i know we all know some people who don't like to do anything alone they don't they don't you know like to go to the movies they don't like to go on vacation they don't like to go shopping and and i'm not talking about those who have anxiety because they're afraid they may get kidnapped or robbed or something but those who just cannot be by themselves they don't know how to entertain themselves they always have to be around a crowd around people right talking about those type of individuals you have to learn how to be comfortable with yourself once you're comfortable with yourself then you can start to decipher the thoughts that run through your mind that are going through your head you'll be able to start to decipher the different patterns that you have then you'll be able to hear more clearly what it is that you're supposed to be doing. You'll be able to remember, hey, I'm supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. Okay? So you have to start to get comfortable with yourself. Allow you yourself to spend time with yourself. Alright? And once you start to do that and decipher the outside things from your inner world... You'll start to soar. You'll definitely start to remember, hey, I'm supposed to be having fun. Hey, I'm supposed to be, you know, living my life of solitude. Hey, I'm supposed to be changing the world. Hey, I'm supposed to be sharing my story. Hey, I'm supposed to be inspiring people. All types of different things. Okay? The next step on to remembering who you are is remember the things you love to do as a child. 
we all have experiences as children they may not have been the best you may have had a wonderful childhood but the things that you enjoy doing as a child is what you should also still be doing as an adult you should be drawing you should be imagining i don't know who told us that when we became adults that we should no longer use our imagination that we should no longer have fun or play or laugh out loud or run barefoot or dance in a, a rainstorm but you should still be doing those things as an adult you should still be having fun and loving life if you always pretended you were a firefighter you probably should be working with fire not unless you're a pyromaniac don't do that <laughs> right if you always enjoyed helping people or helping animals you should probably be a doctor or a veterinarian in some capacity or an animal rescue what were the things that you loved to do as a child when you were innocent before people told you grow up and the things that you love to do you can't make a living out of because that's the only thing you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be making a living not living life learn to go back to that space that beautiful innocent imaginative space and then you'll start to remember who you are and what it is that you're supposed to be doing children are so free and opinionated and open because they don't have that veil is not as thick they don't have that veil for forgetfulness they don't have the pressures of life bearing them down making them question everything the next step on how to on remembering who you are so you can live your purpose and fulfill the damn thing. <laughs> the next step is following your instincts. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, we, the quote unquote most evolved species walking this planet right now, need a guidebook or we need someone else to tell us what to do instead of just following our instincts these birds don't want for nothing you hear these birds chirping they don't want for anything they know how to build their home the other day I had something stored on my um, back porch at my house and you know it had been a month since I used it I don't use it often but I store it on my back porch and it's really tall it's really big so I had prefer to keep it out there and I took it down because I needed to use it and at the top of it was a bird's nest and I was like, there's a bird's nest? It's so tall. Why is the bird's nest up here? I know this bird isn't still in it. But as I went back outside, I saw the bird fly and land on the wall sideways, mind you, right up where the nest was. And I was like, man, this bird really was using the nest. Instinctively, it knew, okay, hey, well, this hasn't been touched in a while. It hasn't moved, so let me build my nest. <laughs> and it was a perfectly round nest. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Perfect in its own right because the birds know how to build their shelter how to eat their food they know how to take care of themselves they don't need a guidebook I just had a baby y'all know that within two hours I was ready to feed the baby I was ready to nurse him I didn't need a, a, a guidebook he she sure as hell didn't need the guidebook he found that titty so fast and latched on perfectly I was like oh you remember what to do <laughs> He went through some training. He knew what to do. He didn't need anyone to guide him or coach him. Follow your instincts. Your instincts will never steer you wrong. You instinctively know how to do certain things. My son, my eldest one who's 20, when we first moved to Central Florida, he went to a school for the arts and picked up an instrument. This boy, the only instrument he had ever played in his life was a recorder. You know the little small flute th things? He picked up an instrument, and the instrument he picked up was the bass. I'm like, how are you picking up this big old bass, child? But within weeks, literally two, three weeks, he's been playing like he was playing his whole life. He was winning state competitions. His music teacher was like, has he ever played before? I said, no, this is his first time picking it up. But he instinctively knew because that's what he was supposed to be doing. Then he moved from the orchestra bass to the, the jazz bass guitar, just all types of stuff. He just knew what to do. Instincts. You've got to follow it. And then the last thing to remember who you are, you have to be free and clear of these chemicals. You have to allow yourself to be detoxed. 
Stop eating this junk food. I know they tell you that you're made up of junk DNA, that your DNA is 99% empty and it's junk DNA. That's incorrect. And they tell you the junk food is comfort food. Oh, it's something quick and easy. That's incorrect. It is horrible for you. These extra medications and prescriptions are horrible for you. My youngest, well, my used to be youngest son, my bonus son, y'all know he's autistic. And I, I've been interacting with him heavily since he was two years old. But, I mean, I've known him since he was in his mother's womb. And he was not born autistic. It wasn't until he got them shots and he started regressing, stopped talking, stopped feeding himself, started developing earaches. Then he started having seizures. Then they had him on all these medications. Then he would only eat McDonald's or stuff like that. And when I was able to assist my husband more so we could get him on a better schedule and routine, the seizures stopped coming as frequently. We stopped eating the McDonald's. He stopped screaming as much. And we were able to get him off a lot of the prescription medications by just adding supplements and herbs. We had to detox his brain, detox his gut, because that's where his second brain resides. That's where everyone's second brain resides, in your gut. So you gotta be free and clear and detox. And then you'll be able to get through the metal and the murk, okay? All right, wealthy family, that's all that I have for you today. I love and appreciate you all. Here, let me say my thank yous. And thank you to all the new subscribers because I know we surpassed 666. I couldn't even get the screenshot. Um, look out for that video, the energy of six, and of course the giveaway that's going to come along with that, okay? And until we connect again, stay alert, stay aware, and live in love. Peace.